we're going to have a little more fun with these trig identities here. Let's check this out. I have something plus something equals 1, okay? Uh, for example, if I have uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 equals 1, I can also say um, 0.6 divided by, divided by 2 plus 0.4 divided by 2 will equal 1 divided by 2. You divide everything by the same number and the equal sign stays true. So, uh, how does that, why do we care? Why do we care? This is why we care. Because we can take uh, everything here and divide it by sine squared theta. Just to get handy with maneuvering these things, okay? 1 over sine squared theta, okay? Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that this will equal 1, it'll cancel out. And uh, cosine theta squared, sorry, over sine theta squared. Ooh. Well, what is this really? This is this is cosine theta times cosine theta. Oh, oops, cosine theta over sine theta times sine theta. Do you remember? We had the last video we showed tan theta was this, which really was this with the to make it the ratios. Tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, which should imply that cotangent or one over will equal the reverse of that. You see that? Actually, I'll just keep it the same here. 1 over 10. Okay? So this, this identity we figured before shows us that 1 over tangent will equal cosine over sine. So what this whole thing here, there's, there's one 1 over tangent. And here's another 1 over tangent. So what this whole thing together looks like is 1 over tangent squared theta. Okay, well, what 1 over tangent, let, let's be smart about this. This again is cotangent over 1. Cotangent over 1. So instead of writing 1 over tangent squared, we would say it's simply cotangent squared theta. Okay? So that's what this whole mess becomes. And then we still have this guy on the right, 1 over sine, okay, sine, uh, I'll do it this way, sine squared, I'll say it's like this. Okay, now, what do we know about sine? Sine is, sine data is 1 over cosecant, therefore, 1 over sine is 1 over cosecant, uh, 1 over 1 over cosecant, ah. It's, if this equals this, then 1 over sine will equal 1 over 1 over cosecant. Now, when we divide a, one, a number by a fraction, this becomes 1 times the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay, just to refresh the math, all it is is cosecant theta. So what we have, this is, this is simply cosecant theta, this is simply cosecant theta times cosecant squared theta. Oh, don't forget the one, that's still there. So we have our we have our left side and our right side. So our final identity out of this thing, just by applying our previous identities and knowing how to flip things around with this great seven algebra, we have one plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. Okay. So that's that's a further Pythagorean identity. Now, remember, we can change the way it looks by applying an infinite combination of these things. I could change this to be 1 over sine squared. I could change this to be 1 over tan squared. I could change this to be sine squared over sine squared. It doesn't matter. Or anything to make it equal 1. I could move, subtract cotangent squared and put it on that side. Like a subtract from both sides to cancel it out. Say 1 equals cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. Infinite ways. 
Okay? But these identity here all stem from previous identities, which we all know how to do and are handy with rolling around with them. Okay? Remember, uh, the, the main principle here is just making it look different from, uh, uh, from the original by dividing through by the same value on each. And it maintains the, the truthfulness of the equal sign. Mm, okay. <clears throat> Give me an email if you want me to explain something a little more clearly. But this is your trig identity. And now you know how to prove it. <laughs>